So two days before the Passover meal and the, um, the festival of the unleavened bread, the, gal- the disciples had gathered for a feast, for a meal. And as they gathered, a woman came in. And she had an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of nard. And she broke it and poured some over Jesus' head. Some who were gathered there started to grumble about this and said, Oh, she shouldn't have wasted that expensive perfume. We could have sold it and given money to the poor. But Jesus said, "Why Leave her alone. You will always have the poor with you, and you can show them kindness any time you choose. But you won't have me with you always. She has done a good thing. She has anointed me for my burial. When it was evening, Jesus be gathered again for the festival of the unleavened bread, for the Passover meal. And he began to tell them about his death that was coming. And he told them, one of you will betray me. And they began to say amongst themselves, well, Surely not I, Lord. Surely it's not me who will betray you. And Jesus said, One who dips the bread in the cup with me, one of the twelve here, will betray me. Even Judas said, Surely not I. Jesus said, It is as you say. And woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. And while they were eating, he took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them. And he said, take this, it is my body. And then he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them also. And all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood in the new covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never drink of the fruit of the vine again until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. As we prepare our hearts for communion, let us join ourselves in prayer. Redeemer God, rich in mercy, infinite in goodness, we were far off until you brought us near, and our hands are empty until you fill them. As we eat this bread and drink this cup through the power of your Holy Spirit, feed us with your heavenly food. Renew us in your service. Unite us in Christ and bring us to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. So I have sung a hymn. They went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus told them, Before morning comes, all of you will desert me. They began to protest. And Peter said, Lord, even if it costs me my life, I won't desert you. I would never do that. Jesus laughs and says, Peter, before the cock crows twice this day, you will betray me three times. Peter insisted, Lord, even if it costs me my life, I promise I will never, I will never do it. I'll never betray you. And they each said the same thing. And then they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even unto death. He said, sit here and wait while I pray. And going a little further, Jesus threw himself on the ground 
And he cried, Abba, Father, if it is in your will, take this cup from me. But not what I want, what you want. Jesus came and found Peter, James, and John asleep. He said to them, can't you stay awake even for a little while? He went and he began to say the same thing. Prayed hard. He came back and they were asleep again. He said, wake up. Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And a third time, he went and he prayed to God that this cup might be removed from him, but pledged himself to do the will of God. When he came back and again found them asleep, he said, this is enough. The hour has come. My betrayer is at hand.
Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. They all stood up. Judas, leading a crowd with clubs and swords, came bringing the chief priests and the scribes and the elders Judas had agreed to betray Jesus, and the chief priests agreed to give him money for it. And he had given them a sign, the one I kiss will be the man. And Judas approached Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him on the cheek. Jesus was immediately seized by the crowd and arrested. And someone out of the crowd whipped out a sword and cut off the ear of the chief priest's servant. And Jesus said, you come to me with clubs and swords. I've been teaching in the temple for days and you never arrested me there. But do what you have come to do. And they took him to the high priest's house. And there they put him on trial. And they brought all kinds of witnesses to testify to the things that people were saying. But none of them agreed. Some had said, he said he would tear down the temple which was built by hands and replace it in three days with a temple that was not built by hands. But even they couldn't agree on that story. So finally the high priest said, what do you say to these accusations? But Jesus would say nothing. Then he asked, Are you the Messiah? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest ripped his clothing and said, What more witness do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. And they began to spit on him and hit him. And they blindfolded him and said, prophesy, as they whacked at him.
the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Peter had been following the crowd behind after everyone else deserted him. And he came to the chief priest's house and stood in the courtyard. And as he was there warming himself by a fire, the, one of the servant girls of the chief priest came over to him and he said, Wait a minute. You, you were one of them. You came with them. Peter said, No. I think you have me mixed up with someone else. I, I don't know him. I've, I've never heard of him. And then later on, they were outside of the house. The same servant girl began telling everyone, the bystanders that came by, he is one of them. He was with Jesus of Nazareth, I, I'm certain. Peter said, no, no, it wasn't me. I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know, I don't know anything about it. And then the bystanders came along and said, wait a minute, you must be with him. You are a Galilean. Your accent gives you away. He says, I swear to you, I don't know the man. Just as he did, cock crowed twice. Jesus remembered, or Peter remembered, what Jesus had said. He began to weep. As soon as it was morning, 
the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered them, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. As soon as it was morning, they handed Jesus over to Pilate. And he asked them, he asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews, as they have said? Jesus gave no reply. Well, actually, Jesus said, You say so. And the chief priests began to throw all kinds of accusations about what Jesus had done. And Pilate said, What do you say to all of these accusations that they say about you? All these things that they are saying. Jesus made no reply again. It was a tradition around the Passover that a prisoner would be released to celebrate the Passover. Anyone anyone the crowd chooses. And there was a man named Barabbas who had been in prison because he killed someone during the insurrection. He was there among all the other rebels. And the crowd began to ask Pilate to engage in this tradition, to release one of the prisoners. And Pilate said, should I release Barabbas to you or Jesus, the King of the Jews? And the scribes and the chief priests and the elders began to stir up the crowd to ask for Barabbas. And Pilate said, well, what should I do with Jesus? And they shouted, crucify him. And Pilate said, but why? I see no, I find no evil in this man. They said all the more, crucify him. So Pilate released Barabbas. And he had Jesus flogged. Handed him over to be crucified.
When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The soldiers took Jesus and clothed him in purple, placed a crown of thorns on his head, and they began to mocking him, they began to mock him, Hail, King of the Jews! They took sticks and beat him over the head. Finally, they took him out to be crucified after they stripped him of his clothing. And they took, uh, they compelled a passerby named Simon of Cyrene to carry the cross out to where they were going to crucify him. It was about nine in the morning when they nailed him to the cross. They crucified him there. And they divided his clothing among them, casting lots to see who would get what piece of clothing of Jesus's. It was in Golgotha, the place of the skull, where he was crucified. And they placed a plaque that said, King of the Jews, above his head. And they crucified him between two bandits there. And those who passed by derided him, and they spit on him, and and called him names, and even those who were crucified alongside him made fun of him and derided him. At noon, darkness fell all over the land, and from noon until three, at what time Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Aloy, Aloy, Lama Sabbatana, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken? People said around him, he must be calling Elijah. And they ran and got a sponge filled with wine and gave it to him. And they said, let's wait and see if Elijah comes and takes him down. But he cried out and breathed his last and died. There was a centurion standing guard kneeled nearby. And when he had seen how Jesus died, he said, Surely this man was God's own son. At that moment, the curtain in the temple was torn.